Why hello there, welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host Agostino Zynga and this is episode number 550, that's 550 with I, your host Agostino Zynga. I hope you're doing well wherever this show may find you. We're in 550 now, 550, imagine that, we're only, what, more, 450 away from 1000. Jeez, I struggled there for a bit, you know, I was struggling for a little bit to figure out how far away we were from 1000 from 550. That's how you know how smart I actually am. But yeah, smashing through the episodes, getting through them one by one. Glad you could join me once again. If you haven't already joined the Patreon, what are you already waiting for? I uploaded a bonus episode of Patreon already the other day. Um, I'm actually thinking about maybe, maybe I should do the Patreons longer instead of making them in half an hour. I like to do half an hour just because there's stuff that I've kind of don't think fits on the main show or maybe a bit risque in terms of content. So I'll chuck it up on the Patreon. But I'm thinking maybe instead of it being a half an hour show per week, it might be an hour show per week. So on top of all the free stuff you get on this channel and on this main podcast feed, you also get the bonus episode once per week. I don't know what you guys think. Should it be half an hour? Should it be an hour? Let me know in the comments down below. But if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you jump on there already. It's patreon.com for us Agostino. I've got a new show up there already. So make sure you get involved. Don't delay. It's really bombastic. It's really fun. Um, and you will hopefully like the subject matter that I'm talking about because it's a little bit, you know, a little bit out there, a little bit um, pushing the envelope a little bit, I would say, in some of the regards that I talk about, but I'm, I'm coming from it. I'm coming from a good place. Uh, I mean no ill will. I'm just trying to think out loud and what better way to do it than in front of all you guys who happen to be my, you know, internet friends. So definitely go and check on that if you can. It's only a dollar, it's only a one pound a subscription to join in. Obviously there's other tiers if you want to support, but essentially you get one bonus episode per week as well as maybe a live stream at the end of the month. But usually it's just one bonus episode per week. So if you want to have that ability to see all that stuff, then get involved. Don't delay, jump on the Patreon today at patreon.com for just Agostino patreon.com for slash a-g-o-s-t-i-n-h-o the link is in the description wherever you're listening or watching this show but yeah here we are back in again in a sector many things to talk about so let's just jump right on into it first thing off the bat united are out of the fa cup lost to middlesbrough at home on penalties no surprise i don't really have much to say about it um but, pff, what can you say about the result in it what can you say about the result i'm kind of conflicted because I'm one of the fans who actually, I'm one of those weird fans who thinks we're only going to change when things get really worse. Yeah. Yeah. When things get worse is the only thing it's going to actually change the way that this club is being run and maybe the way the fans, some of the fans perceive our club and the problems that we have. Cause I still think there is a part of our fan base that feels like this sort of bad time that we're currently going through is going to pass on its own. And I think there's some fans that also feel as if we, if we sign a couple of players here or there, we get a Declan Rice, we get a Haaland, like all of a sudden we're going to be competing with the, for the league. And I don't necessarily think that's true because quite clearly the standards of the league, especially towards the top, have improved so much that you can't get away with winning titles and you know league title or you can't get away with winning domestic trophies league titles but just having the best players on the pitch that's not going to work you need to have an infrastructure in place that's going to be able to uh, that's going to be able to deploy a style of play that you want and then you're going to fill in those occupational places with the coaches and players that you need in order to get the results that you want on the pitch but you just can't fluke it with just having the best players. That 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 kind of approach from years gone by doesn't run anymore. And also we don't have the ability, we don't have the advantage of having a genius manager, Alex Ferguson, right? Alex Ferguson maybe was able to get the most out of average players and also sprinkle in some stardust. But for the most part, if you don't have a genius manager and you have people who are working above the coach who are inept and don't know what they're doing, and then the standard of the league improves, the top four teams improve in general, and then the teams outside the top four are also fighting for their lives and no one wants to get relegated anymore. And teams like Aston Villa and all that stuff don't have to sell their players if they don't want to. If they do want to sell them, they sell them at a premium, Jack Grealish. It's going to create a league where the top teams have to really do something in order to win those trophies whether it's European trophies or if it's a league, they have to do something. They just can't turn up and just take it. It's not how it works. Um, you know, Man City are running away the league this season, but it's not to say Liverpool are playing that much worse. It's not to say Chelsea even played that much worse. All things considered with them. It's just that the standards are so high towards the top that if you don't catch up soon, you just won't ever catch up. 
And I think United are in that kind of position. So as bad as it was to go out against Middlesbrough, I still think in the long run, probably going to do us more good than bad. I still think, and even though it's brutal to say this, that we should probably, if we want to see change at United, we can't be rooting for us to finish in the top four. That's not going to be the right incentive for the club to make the right decision. Because clearly, whenever we finish in the top four, the investment isn't as forthcoming as it probably should be. And more in gen, more yeah, in general, the club usually thinks that they can get away with it. Like if we go ahead it now, why don't we get away with it again next season? But I think if we spend at least this season outside of the Champions League, it's especially off the back of signing the likes of Varane, Ronaldo, and Sancho, it's going to look so bad optically that they'll have no option but to change it. That's the hope. That's the hope. They'll have no option but to change their approach, whether it's, you know, giving the manager whoever they want to be the permanent manager after Ralph, the full control of the footballing side of things, whether it's getting somebody else more experienced to work alongside um, Murto, even if it's Ralph Ragnar to work alongside and maybe giving him more of a say. There needs to be a different approach because quite clearly what we're doing so far hasn't worked. Thank God Ed Woodward has finally gone. That useless PR ICK is definitely you know, was one of the people holding back the club, but let's not kind of be stupid here and think it was only one person. There's a culture at that club in general from the boardroom to the players to everybody else around it that breeds this kind of lackadaisical toxicity that we're seeing day in, day out, where we basically got a coach who is kind of known for playing, you know, this gag and press heavy metal where a football where the players go out and run and press their opposition players. But clearly the players couldn't hack it they clearly went back to basics and decided not to play that approach. And for his entire tenure so far, we haven't seen any hiring of a fitness coach to basically get these players through their places or to kind of to put these players through their paces. We've not seen any of that. So clearly there's enough player power or there's enough lack of power given to the manager where players can basically dictate how training goes or they can say, hey, we don't like this. We want to go back to that. And now we're in this, and now you know those very same fans who watch us play week in week out think that somehow one single player, one single save is going to save us. Not going to happen. Not happening anytime soon. So whatever in it, whatever. I'm I'm kind of over it. I'm emotionally detached. I'm watching it from afar, and you know, sarah sarah. Next on the list, um, or next on the list, something else I've been thinking about. I've been having a bit of a tough time with the old um, black barbers here in London. It's one of those things that generally just always has been grinding my gears and something that I've kind of just had to repress and just had to deal with it silently. But today is the day where I have to speak about my speak about my speak my truth, right? I have to kind of get it off my chest. So for the longest time, I've been trying to get my hair braided or locked, right? I want to get it. I want to get dreadlocks. or I want to get it braided. But the first step, I think, is I want to get some braids just at the top of my head. Nothing too crazy. You see how it goes, isn't it? At the moment, my hair is kind of semi-stop growing because obviously I don't comb it out too tough. I don't keep it in the best of conditions. But if you put it in braids, it helps, you know, to regrow the hair, make it nice and healthy. I just wanted to see what that style looked like with, on the top of my head. It's probably not going to suit because I've got a weird shaped head, but I just want to see what it looks like. Anyway, that was a plan. And obviously still I'm having issues with my fades, as you can tell. It's not the most crispiest thing in the world. It looks a bit sketchy, but I wanted to get like an Odell Beckham Jr. fade, right? Do you know what I mean? Like nice and sharp, loads of nice gradients, and you can clearly see, okay, cool, this guy spent some money on his haircut. That's what I want. Nothing too bad, nothing too shabby. I got the money, I, I got the time, let me have a nice haircut. But in London, when it comes to trims, it's really difficult to find good people. Everyone's, like there's no middle ground. It's either somebody's really good or they're horrible right for the most part and usually sometimes the middle ground people are super expensive so you know you're basically left with those two options and it's hard to find good ones and when you do find good ones they're always super far like i used to go to one that was basically an hour and a half journey like on public transport from my house all the way there which was crazy it was obviously quite good for my reading habits because it meant i was reading literally a book a week or sometimes if i wanted to go there not a book yeah maybe yeah but i was getting through loads of books actually jesus christ yeah because i'd read an hour there an hour coming back which didn't include the time that i was going to work as well so that i on top of it but that was just too much and i had to kind of stop going there because you know who can yeah trying to travel for an hour to go to again heck that's nonsense so i've been trying to find someone to cut my hair i've been able to find them this random time i was in on instagram i happened to stumble across this guy's instagram profile who happened to be a kind of dreadlock 
dude who does braids also who's well known in the area that i live in london and is well known within the kind of london core black guy scene he's you know done the braids of somebody like a uh, lancy foe he's done the braids of i think um wilfred zaha and a few other people right who are kind of connected to london because they play football they're musicians whatever it may be so i thought okay this guy's gonna be perfect right somebody i can kind of go to and he's obviously got a public profile so clearly he's okay to invite guests or invite he's, he's he's okay to like have random requests from clients and obviously in his bio also when you check his profile it says something like oh um da, 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 i'm a look whatever guy no no dms yeah no dms please call yeah number in bio and then you go in his bio but there's no number in there so then what you end up having to do is you end up having to leave him a comment because or you end up sending him a dm anyway to see if he gets his number you don't get the reply in the dm then you have to leave a comment on his pictures when he uploads them hoping that you get his attention because he's acting like a fucking you know hot chick on there and you're having to chase this guy around on instagram to kind of get his attention i couldn't get it finally get this guy's attention he get he replies back to my dm and basically gives me his number I try and call the number to book an appointment. It rings, it rings. He put, he sends me to voicemail. Then I get a text soon after that says, Hey, I can't, I don't pick up the phone. Just text me. So, you know, again, more hurdles. I didn't text and say what I want. And he says, Oh, um, how, like he starts like, I don't know. What do you say? And then she's like, Oh, send me a picture of what your hair looks like. Send you, what, what, why am I sending you a picture of my face? Like, what the fuck is this? I clearly sold you what, like, this is your hair brush. Is it this? Is it this? Like, going through all these sort of stupid little hurdles. Then it got to a point where I was like, You know what? Enough. Like, I'm done. I'm all right. I've, I've changed my mind. And it got me thinking about just like the hassle that's involved with getting good haircuts and good trims and good service in the UK. It's just annoying. Like, it's really difficult to find people that are good. I know there's one other place I want to go to that I've been kind of having my eye on. You have to book the appointments online via this kind of calendar system, which is a bit different from going to a regular kind of hood barbers where you just walk in and wait for your someone to kind of, you know, slide you in. So I'm going to maybe try that approach. But honestly, man, this guy made me rage so much. But it also made me think, you know what? That might be one of my kind of first brick and mortar businesses that I kind of think about doing myself in terms of opening my own barber. Uh, my own barbershop sorry and having it kind of um and 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 doing it the right way doing it the way that i would feel others would also appreciate in terms of just you know people that answer the phone and they're nice um having a clear pricing structure having barbers that are of a really good standard equally right so it's not like if you go to this person or that person it's a huge shopping quality having additional services like coloring and braids and locks and stuff like this is something that needs to be done especially for guys like we need it because so far the options that we have available are so bad and unfortunately all the good barbers they don't bother doing stuff with us you know regular folk because they get 10 times more money doing stuff with fucking rappers and footballers which i completely understand why wouldn't you bother like because you just go to their house they live in great apartments somewhere you're probably going to give you a massive tip who do you rather pay who do you rather do the haircut trim for that's like some guy that might give you 200 quid or me that might give you 50 might give you 50 you know what i mean it's much better it's your your time is probably best used going to that person so i i understand it but honestly it's legitimately one of the most frustrating things it's probably up there with um with kind of the snobby attitude you get from like you know black people that live in berlin you know those kind of people who think oh when they see you they, like they get intimidated because they feel like oh you they're not the only cool black person in the room it's the same thing when it comes to black barbers it's just this weird energy where somehow they just i don't know man it's like the, it's like a drug dealer energy it kind of feels like a, a little bit and you know what i mean by that when it's like you're you're trying to pick up and the, the dealer's telling you they're like half an hour away but they're never half an hour away they're most you know they're probably two hours away maybe a whole day away and they never get their own time and they have you just hanging by a thread because or they have or they leave you hanging because they know you can and you don't go anywhere because you badly need the drugs it feels the same thing with barbers like they just mock you about so much it's just so annoying and then sometimes you go to one that's terrible and it's like ugh, i don't know i've just had a real nightmare when it comes to haircuts as you can tell which is why usually i just opt to just get my sides shaved and whatnot and i just leave the top because i can't trust anybody with the top because already my sides will get fucked up so imagine the top but i'm just gonna go but the plan is now i'm just gonna probably go to a flipping you know a regular auntie around the corner and just get her to braid my hair because i'd love to get it all in one place i'd love to get my hair faded and also get my hair braided all in one place so i can just leave it but i'm gonna have to do what most people do get a trim one place and then go get a hair braided in another place just to kind of mix up a little bit but honestly man i'm done 
this this thing is so frustrating man it's really pissing me off but i guess it's part of being a you know modern 21st century man living in london in it because i think about the last place i got a really good trim it must have been like mexico when i went to mexico city that must have been the last time i got like a proper hd you know nfl ready flipping fade that was honestly legit to me one of the best haircuts i've ever got the guy absolutely you know shaped me up in a bad boy style and since then i've been i've been chasing that dragon it's like that first high you know i mean <laughs> and i haven't been able to get it from here at all man it's fucking oh it's a sad story but honestly my hair cut in life has just been a mad misery i remember there was a time too where i tried to cut my own hair <laughs> i just little i had this little period where i was just so frustrated with the barbers i tried to do the whole cutting my hair whole thing and it's just it was shocking it's probably worse than this that i've got there you know what i mean but you can see it the fade is fucking janky in it Ugh, whatever man i don't care i don't give a fuck move on just <laughs> move on i had enough of that i don't want to get myself upset for nothing um yeah let's talk about this this is a minor one a little bit of a weird one but let's just um let's just let's just let's attempt to make some sense of this right some sense of it i'm not sure if it does make any sense but i'm sure most of you have seen these um interesting pictures um courtesy of people on the internet regarding julia fox and kanye we're celebrating julia fox's birthday on the 2nd of the 2nd 2022 which is like a pretty cool date to have your birthday all things considered with those numbers and whatnot but the body but 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 there was interesting occurrence that happened i guess they were somewhere no i know they were they were this cool restaurant in new york called lucian that you know all those um dime square hoes talk about all the time i guess it's what uh you know every every metropolitan place every metropolitan city in the country or in the world has a restaurant like that right where all the cool kids go and hang out and it's meant to be amazing but it looks really small and really cramped but I'm, i guess the food's meant to be good but regardless they went there to have a birthday party and for whatever reason according to the narrative that exists on the internet kanye bought not only julia fox but some people in her friendship group all birkin bags maybe he bought her all the five and then she decided to give them out to her friends but either way a very interesting way to display um your affection for somebody in in public because if ever there was a worse time to buy someone a gift it's definitely when you go and buy someone a gift in front of other people or no when you go present a gift you bought for somebody especially a significant other in front of others it must be one of the worst times to really give a gift because you have no idea how it's going to land um you also don't know what everyone else is going to purchase for them because i'd imagine when it comes to your partner going out with their friends on their birthday it's less about how much money they're spending on the gift and more so about the thoughtfulness the thought that goes into it so just because you spent a bag or a couple of bags it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the best gift um and you also just don't know how the friends will receive the gift that you give to your partner because that could also be an issue because imagine if like you're in those relationships where your partner's friends hate you <laughs> and you know it and they know it <laughs> and then you turn up there with a dead gift it'd be like a do you know what I mean it'll be further evidence that you're just a, a a nothing guy you're lucky to have their friend they don't know why she's with you all this sort of nonsense but I don't know man there's something really odd and really lame I think a little bit a little bit lame to see women who I think have the means to be able to afford a bag like this in their lifetime if they saved correctly and did the right moves I don't think they're all busted down right dogs i think they're all successful in their own way get so happy and giddy over these bags it just seems like something birds would do like something younger girls would do if you're like under 25 and you legitimately have just left your parents home maybe a this display of like affection love would actually hit more because wow you know what i mean you're 25 years old and this guy just gave you a bag that's you know worth 30 grand and whatnot upwards cool but if you're a grown-ass woman you really shouldn't be getting this excited over a bag really should you or maybe i'm i'm or maybe i don't get it because you know i'm not i'm not a lady so maybe i don't know what a birkin does to a woman in terms of you know t tickling some bits and pieces in them that just make them feel like oh my god this is definitely true love but i don't know man it's an interesting way to approach it again for me personally when it comes to birthdays i'm a little bit conflicted because I grew up in a household where birthdays were never really celebrated like this. In terms of expensive gifts, it was never a thing. The most that happened, and I think that's something that I kind of was happy that kind of got 
taught to me at the time was that a birthday was an opportunity for you to share the day and the moment with your friends as opposed to you just receiving the gifts so what we used to what my parents used to do with, with us when we were younger is that of course they'll take us out to mcdonald's that'll be the, the usual thing even if you didn't have much money mcdonald's was always a lifesaver so definitely did a good job in that way mcdonald's saved a lot of um kids that grew up in poor neighborhoods like i did right with you know not much money where you were able to kind of go out and you know and and then have a banquet sort of meal right a real blast for not much money but the other thing that we did once we got a bit older is that my parents would give us cash and then you just pick a restaurant whether it was tgi fridays or nando's and you take your friends out that would be how we did birthdays so instead of your friends sitting there and just receiving all the gifts was opportunity for you to take your friends out to treat them to a meal very bizarre way to look at things but i actually think thinking back to it at the times i did do it when i had a bigger social group it was definitely a far better way to celebrate a birthday to sort of reconnect with your friends to make sure everyone turns up to because that's one thing that always used to happen back in the day whenever someone would book a restaurant that they went to go celebrate their birthday at, and obviously it wasn't you know they didn't they weren't gonna they weren't gonna comp the bill it would always be um it would always be dependent that the, the attendance would always depend on where it was and how much the, how much it was and people would be sharing the menu and seeing how much the starters were and if they couldn't afford it they just won't go so you'd effectively be shooting yourself in the foot by picking a really nice restaurant that you actually went to go and eat at for your birthday because it would limit the amount of people that would turn up on a day so that would usually be the thing but this kind of you know exuberant um display of wealth and whatnot was never something that was ever kind of crossed our mind and because it's, it's difficult enough having trying to buy a gift for somebody that you actually love like one person let alone having to do it in front of an audience or for him for an audience right presenting it to them in front of an audience i can't imagine that kind of stress and i don't my brain doesn't even work that way i don't even know what would be the right thing to buy what would be the one thing that would take or something i don't i just don't get it it just doesn't make any sense for me personally um and it's just it just throws up too many weird questions you know what i mean like why if you're gonna buy me the bag why don't you give me the money i don't know it's just a very bizarre thing i didn't really make sense of it but again you know it's it's also interesting to see kanye hanging around with um what looks like the sort of like um cool cool side of new york i guess right i guess they're all cool people in their own little right i think there's some models there some artists there designers creative directors blah blah blah, blah. And it's interesting to see him kind of be adjacent to this kind of downtown, gritty, scatty kind of kit fueled side of New York that he probably had no idea existed before he met Julia. And it's just all it took was meeting one person and it kind of opened these doors into this other world. Or maybe he did know, I don't really know. But yeah, I saw it, I found it weird. Don't really get it. I think it's a bit bizarre. Um, I just think it's a bit lame, really, to be honest. I think it's a bit lame. I'd much rather, uh, I'd much rather spend that time if I was going to be with somebody on my own or, uh, you know, together with a group of friends just celebrating, not just exchanging gifts. But, you know, again, the guy looks completely happy and serene. She looks fantastic in the outfit she was wearing. They were on the back of Lucian's, it looked like, you know, doing what people do. At the... It's funny also in these sort of establishments because you get it all the time in Loza. Like I said, I think every metropolitan area has that one spot everyone kind of congregates and goes to when they're having fun. But it's also interesting that usually that place has a spot that usually doesn't make any sense in terms of why it's flipping um why it's so hyped oh so hyped why everyone wants to go there it doesn't make any sense so there's always spots so there'll maybe i remember there's one bar there's usually like a corner seat everyone wanted to get that was at the end of the bar towards the back and i guess because it had a fan but also because you could kind of rest your back and it's kind of you could create your own little room in there right in this little dive bar and then there's this restaurant i'm assuming there's probably a back bit that they haven't sorted out yet or they're trying to extend or whatever in the restaurant and that's now turned into like the vip green room kind of like thing behind the scenes where if you're known and you're somebody of of you know notoriety or influence if you you can kind of use that place as a kind of social clout thing you know what i mean it's just interesting it's just weird like it, every place has it legitimately if you live in a metropolitan city that is somewhat cool you definitely have a scene that has something similar to it and what it says here um it says yeah uh, someone says at the bottom here what the actual place is. it says party plan to kanye i know where the hottest spot in new york city is under construction low-key and the literature under construction i don't know what this place. oh is, is, is this where they actually were or is this or is this person taking a piss i'm not really too sure to be honest but either way um they celebrated they kissed they hung out it is what it is 
ways and this looks like a clocking at work but yeah i guess it's all good in it i guess it's all good then we move on onto this random thing so this track courtesy of this guy called snot came out recently featuring asap rocky and it happens to be actually one of the most probably the best asap rocky features i've seen, heard in a while he hasn't necessarily been putting out a lot of material clearly because he's, you know, he's been busy with other things starting a family with rihanna probably being one and generally it feels like he's maybe not as inspired as he was previously i don't know what's happening it just seems to be a bit of a weird time artistically um maybe some people would accuse him of falling off i don't think so i still think he has the ability to put together a really cohesive um project regardless of what sound direction because that's the thing with him he's so versatile as rocky that he can go in any direction and probably um do a fairly decent job but i thought in terms of just straight rapping ability and coming in and delivering a massive or a really kind of replay worthy verse i thought this track with snot called dojo was really really good but there's one thing that obviously sticks out it's called dojo or she obviously named after the artist dojo cat and snot seems to have a bit of an infatuation with her i understand she's obviously a, a very attractive girl but it got me thinking about this line because i think supposedly she's reacted not that great to it you know maybe jokingly or not jokingly where he says in the chorus i fuck that bitch named doja cat pull up in a scat pack now the common assertion around town is that most likely doja cat isn't a fan of the niggas right that's supposedly what the theory goes around there right she doesn't really like them too tough if i'm not mistaken her partner at the moment is some white dude i'm pretty sure um with long hair i'm not sure if he's a producer or if he's just somebody that she's met back in the day it doesn't necessarily matter but for whatever reason that's the narrative around her name that might have to do also in part with you know that whole chat room thing that she was involved in where people try to cancel her where she was allegedly in a chat room full of like right wingers sharing feet pics and just being naughty and cute and whatnot i don't know who knows what it is and just being a troll or being a shit poster we don't know we don't care she somehow was able to kind of skirt over that in a good way and has somehow been able to rescue her career which has been good um she survived many things actually considering if you think about her kind of you know patchiness in terms of that you know doing what's the, i think her biggest track was produced by dr luke who was involved in the abuse thing with kesha and stuff like she's been able to kind of dope, bob and weave a few things um but for whatever reason that whole thing about her not liking black dudes or something that's always stuck and i guess people were then surprised when people were trying to link her with french montana and whatnot because of the pictures that got out of them on holiday but supposedly they was you know they're just innocently hanging out we don't know the truth about that and i necessarily don't really care but i was just thinking in general about this idea that people just don't fuck with certain races in just in general it's always been weird to me personally because i'm somebody who had gone through a really weird phase in terms of how I viewed that thing and how it basically affected me and my kind of, you know, journey. For the most part, especially where I grew up, the school I went to or the primary school I went to was in a very, you would say, somewhat middle class community, even though we weren't middle class, my family, we just happened to be there because we had a council house, which was basically subsidized housing. And we actually had a, we actually lived in a semi detached home, which was nonsense i think we just got lucky in that regard but we happened to be a poor family living in a fairly affluent area and then i went to a school that was incredibly mixed but also predominantly white but then i also had a class that was mostly black so it was a really strange mix-up and then i think the first girl i had a real crush on was this black girl called jennifer who i think now when last time i checked maybe it was 10 years ago i might have checked up on us one time on social media and she was just smashing it right she was just i think she had like a kid this high-flying executive husband she lived in a mad place she just looked like she was she had her life in order i remember that have you ever had that thing what happens where you search up somebody that you used to go to school with and then they're doing so well that it bums you out about your own life that you just forget about it you kind of wreck on it that's what i did so i found i think i found her somewhere i don't know where i found her and then her life looked so amazing and it made me so sad about how crappy my life was because i think at the time i was working as a sales assistant i don't know where i was in some shop right so i was like making like nineteen thousand pound a year and this girl who was like you know we knew each other when we were younger was clearly earning like 100k plus like she looked she you know when you see someone's picture you just she did she just looked expensive i was like Ugh. so that was my first crush right? and of course nothing happened even back then she knew i was a, i was a loser <laughs> so that nothing happened there and then 
that was sort of my first thing so I, again i never really had the whole black white thing i didn't really give a shit then i guess when i got older especially when i went into my teenage years especially when grime and garage was becoming a thing i loved all the music don't get me wrong but i also was very eclectic in my music taste i'd go to like metal shows i'd go to indie shows just because i liked the music because there was anything else i just liked listening to it and it might have to do with the fact that i was skateboarding when i was younger so maybe the music i was listening to was kind of influenced through skateboarding videos because they usually have great music and very varied in terms of genres and whatnot um, you know, I discovered the Smiths because of skateboarding, basically all those kind of things, even Deftones I can think of, maybe I discovered through there, um, stuff like Red Hill Chili Peppers, like, you know, those kind of stuffs, right? And because of that, I guess it led me to present myself in a certain way. And at that particular time, for whatever reason, the black kid that present themselves in a way where I was wearing like studied, you know, wristbands and like nylon, you know, shiny flipping combat pants looking. Yeah, I just looked, I looked insane with my skateboard on the mom. I looked fucking nuts. Most black girls in my area just didn't like the what I was presenting at. So I was, I was kind of limited in my options and I didn't really get any love from that scene. And then as soon as I got older and things, or as soon as I got a little bit older than that, maybe 16, 18, maybe 16, 18 maybe yes yeah, maybe about 16 to 21 suddenly then i think that was a period maybe when star trek or pharrell started coming on the scene and then things started to change where that kind of aesthetic became a thing now right maybe kid cuddy a bit later on but it became like a thing that kind of alternative looking black dude became like a thing and it became in vogue and then suddenly the same girls that were kind of writing me off were now suddenly interested in, to, in, to, in me again which was obviously nice because you know who doesn't want to have a bit of attention from people especially ones that you want to be have attention on you but it was always a little bit up and down do you know what I mean it was always a bit up and down now it's obviously you know whatever but it was always a bit up and down in that regard but I never at one time during that whole period told myself okay I'm only gonna go for this race or that race it was never a thing like that and I guess it's different for boys because for boys we're usually the ones starving right we're usually the ones devoid of options we just have to take what's given to us like <laughs> we don't have the choice the chance to pick but in general I never really writ anybody off in terms of a, a you know in terms of your race like color creed it didn't really matter to me as long as we vibed and connected now again I was one of those weirdos where especially when I was younger I always kind of opted for the oh, if we vibe, I'm down more so than just you being hot. And I guess most of it had to do it because I was always, I always thought my best game was in person. Like, you know, if as long as I can get around you, maybe I'd have an opportunity because I could be funny and stuff and whatnot. But when it came to just doing straight looks from afar, maybe I wouldn't win because someone would be like, nah, I don't like his face. I don't like his head. <laughs> I mean, like it, it's easy to kind of like point out my flaws from afar. But once we get in close and we're kind of talking and jiving, maybe my personality can maybe win you over. Who knows? Maybe, maybe not. We don't know. But it just made me, it just made me think when I listened to this track, thinking, huh, I wonder if that is a thing where she just generally has a thing where she just doesn't fuck with certain races. And I wonder if people, because I'm sure people are like that in the world, or in general, I'm sure people listen to this are like that too, where they say, well, I would never date a certain race. But for whatever reason, why is it such a bad thing? Why do people think it's a bad like, Again, I don't do it because I think that's stupid. I would never write off an entire group of females just because they don't have happen to have the same, share the same color skin as I do. But I know some people have that preference. And when they voice it, people get really angry. And I don't really get it. If it is a preference and it's something that they like, why does it make you upset? They're not going to bang you, innit? It doesn't matter, really. But for every reason, it seems to really push people's buttons. I guess because in some ways, if you're black, especially, and you say, I don't like black girls, you sound like you're self-hating. And I guess same thing if you're white and you say that, it sounds like you're, it sounds like you're writing off your own race and people get really, you know, what you think called? They get uh, really defensive about that sort of thing. I can understand it. Or maybe it makes them view themselves a bit differently. Who knows really what the case is? But I just saw that line and I thought to myself, I wonder if that would offend her because of course you know snot is clearly a black dude and if she would want to set the record straight like nah nigga i would never fuck you i mean that's never happening <laughs> and you know why <laughs> you know what i mean i wonder if that would be a thing that she would say or if it just or or also i wonder if this it'll be interesting too if like another artist who's not black happens to put a line in his song about her that's maybe insinuates that something happened will she have the same reaction or is it just her having that reaction like none? Let's set the record straight. Don't put a body on me that I didn't claim. That kind of thing. I don't really know. Who knows? Who knows what the thing is? Maybe I'm making a mountain out of a molehill. But you know, this is what podcasting is. You make a mountain out of a molehill for the entertainment of your viewing public. That's what you do. 
what else do we have to do here um yeah this is quite interesting this is because your bbc i like this one this is fucking hilarious so um most of you would know who peter dinklage is right um obviously from game of thrones and he's coming for a bit of bother online which is i think very very deserving considering what he tried to do try to pull a fast one so um Peter Dinklage was obviously annoyed that supposedly um, this new remake of Snow White that they're doing where they for some, for some reason decided to cast a Latina or Hispanic girl, however you pronounce it, however you say those kind of things, to be the main Snow White girl. To be honest, it doesn't make any sense, but the girl does have a very snowy, white, angelic cute, cheruby face, so I kind of get it in that regard. And also some, you know, some make-believe is a fucking animation, who cares who plays it, but you know, it's just one of those unnecessary work things people do just to kind of tick some boxes. If anything, it'd probably be far more beneficial for representation if you actually made an original story that captured that community and actually spoke about things in their tradition or whatever. You know what I mean, there's far more interesting ways to go about kind of ticking diversity boxes and just remaking everything and changing everyone's race. That for me doesn't do anything. It just it just angers the people who care about this shit more. It gives people who hate browns and black people in the first place a reason to hate us even more it just does nothing it does nothing it's a net negative in my opinion but anyway we can we move so this is close to the bbc it says disney's responded to chris oh yeah that's what so so they kind of cast the, the hispanic girl in as snow white and they then declared that for the role of the seven dwarfs they were going to look at casting you know actual dwarfs instead of just getting actors and making them look smaller you know the usual thing that they did and kind of like um Lord of the Rings and for some whatever reason Peter Dinklage got upset about this so the, the, this is the article it says Disney has responded to criticism made by Game of Thrones actor Peter Dinklage about the forthcoming live action adaption of Snow White Dinklage said the remake of the 1937 animated film based on a story from the Brothers Grimm was backwards <laughs> this guy man disney said it was going to avoid reinforcing stereotypes from the original animated film dinker said that disney should have reassessed the project he said i was a little taken aback by the fact that they were very proud to cast a latina actress of snow white he told podcaster mark maron but you're still telling the snow white story and the seven dwarves take a step back and look at what you're doing here it makes no sense so he's basically saying he doesn't understand why they're still casting the seven dwarves or why movies have dwarves or anything has dwarves in it when we've moved so far forward in culture because supposedly that doesn't need to be depicted on on, on, on tv anymore it's ridiculous if you're trying to tell a story you can't use dwarves which of course would upset some working professionals who happen to be dwarves themselves who happen to be little people have you however you meant to was there ever the political way the politically correct way to describe people like that it would obviously anger them because yes you're 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 not bought you you don't choose the body you're born in but you try and make the best of it especially if you have a passion for acting and yeah it's it's unfair that you know you're unlikely to get a john wick um you know leading role if you are a dwarf yeah we know but you you kind of get in where you fit in and if you can get in some roles that can maybe help you tell your story or you can get some roles that would maybe help with representation and maybe help with inspiring the next generation of kids coming up and whatnot that's going to be a good thing in it but this guy he happens to be one of the most famous people from that community decides to get up up in front and declare to everybody that nah they don't want work they don't want to do that anymore let's move on to do other things it's like no no you chill you've made your millions on game of thrones you are a legit actor you've done your thing you've got a really long storied career some of us are still scrapping for scraps like we're still fighting for scraps don't speak for us so it continues it says here um think as you start the ox in the forthcoming oscar tipped film um Kyrano has a form of dwarfism called the, whatever that word is the actor was previously spoken about his representation of dwarfism saying that it was a bad writing to make a dominant character trait oh my god the original Snow white and seven doors film released in 1938 was the full first full length animated feature from disney and is considered one of the studio's classics west side story star rachel ziegler and red notice actress gal gadot are set to star in the adaptation of snow white uh, and the evil queen respectively so that's meant to be the girl you know again she's clearly not white as snow because that's the whole point of flipping snow white but still in terms of her facial features she does look pretty snow white to me especially if you they put all the makeup on her and whatnot she'll look great i'm sure she'll do a good job it's basically good news here it continues here um, speaking about the new film dinklage acknowledged disney's casting of latin actress in a leading role but said further progressive casting was needed so what's what does he want does he want like basketball players to play the dwarves instead 
Like this guy is nuts. It says here and it continues. You're progressive in one way, but you're still making that backward story of swerving dwarves living in a cave. Have I done nothing to advance the cause of my soapbox? I guess I'm not loud enough. Which again is, you know, if ever you want to see how somebody what if ever if ever there was a example of flipping latent narcissism this is it right where supposedly he feels as if what he has done in his career has is somewhat um akin to um setting the standard of what should happen in the future like yeah my what i've done in my role should be enough to let you know that this is it and we move on from this it's like you don't speak for everybody my friend you really do not um this is continues they were proud so, so they were so proud of that and all love and respect to the actress and the people who thought that they were doing the right thing but i'm just like what are you doing jesus christ so anyway so clearly that was his impression and it was just nice to see the other actors within that community decide no 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 no, you don't speak for us my friend and it says here um uh, this article goes your movie where peter dinklage snow white criticism draws ire from actors with dwarfism the so there's another rumors um so it says yeah one person uh what's that, sorry one person who made his feelings known on the matter is actor dylan post also a pro wrestler who's competed under the name hog horns woggle and swoggle postal has appeared in muppets most wanted and the leprechaun origin starring as a titular agonist antagonist in the lesser speaking with the daily mail postal explained um how he had been how he would be happy to play one of the seven dwarves in snow white movie he said and i quote it makes me so sick to my stomach to think that there are seven roles for dwarfs that can't get normal acting roles or very few and far between roles and now they're gone because this guy to be in the remake of one of the biggest fairy tales biggest disney stories of all time would be enormous i know me i'm six other little people who would love this role disney call me this would be a dream come true i'm begging for one I am begging for one. So here's flipping Peter Dinkish telling you, no, this is enough. Like, let's move on. We don't need to have these representations in movies anymore. Again, in a makeup, make believe, animated flipping movie, nonetheless, it's not like, you know, they are just including a bunch of dwarves in a movie about some girl getting kidnapped just because they want to make, they, they want to take the piss. No, this is a make believe film. Make believe. So much, it's so make believe that even if they would have cast a quintessential caucasian lady who happened to be very pale they would have still had to make her more pale than what she actually was in order to have been reflective of the actual animation so it's not real it continues he says we're in a society in time of work and progression and i get that to an extent but this is a fairy tale frankie said that this is a fairy tale about snow white and the seven dwarves dwarves are one of the focuses they're literally in the title <laughs> he says dwarf is a medical term actor jeff brooks also said the condition i have is agno how do you pronounce that word um that is a fact i am a dwarf i'm hoping they cast little people they give to the, um they give them the work peter dinkage may be hurting the chances of some dwarf actors here and it scares me that disney would change the decision that big over a comment of one actor they have to they have been too quick here i agree because like i said i think if i'm not mistaken the the kind of are they elves or what are they in, in lord of no elves what are they hobbits right in lord of the rings hobbits and lord of the rings they're all regular actors but they obviously did some cgi or some clever camera trickery to make them look far more smaller than what they are and of course some would argue that uh, some would argue i sound like dsp the argument could be that some there are some little people actors that exist who are currently out of work and really good at their job who could have done those roles but i guess in the production or the movie producers kind of side of things they would say no we need these famous people to do these roles because that's the only way we're going to guarantee people who get you know have bums and seats and watch this movie and if you're going to invest that much as they did in lord of the rings they can't afford to lose it by just you know hiring a bunch of kind of no-name actors that nobody knows that doesn't make any sense but i'm glad there was some pushback in that regard a few other clips here he's not dwarf king after her actors dwarfing i love it uh what there was a comment here the to avoid the reinforcement uh yeah this is it, isn't it right uh yeah i forgot that snow white and seven doors were based on real life just like hbo show with the dragons that made a certain soapbox dwarf riches was anyone know who i need to get a hold of for the casting of snow white reboot so dylan postal is really going in he's not having it at all uh then he continues to sick his stomach, his medical term. 
what's this for Katrina Kemp was quick to agree um, and mentioned that they had decided to substitute the seven dwarves and CGI characters that might have been even more damaging of course um, at this time Disney has not yet confirmed how it will handle the casting of the seven dwarves in the upcoming live remake so they wanted to be woke they wanted to react to everything that was going on and try and make it seem you know yeah this girl looked good man let's not be you know yeah, she's pale but she looked good compared to the cartoon i think that 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 um that girl that they cast the latina girl i think she's gonna do really well in that role so as soon as they get the makeup on her, the hair the wigs because she look amazing because you already see how great the the girls that do this stuff in real life when they go in IRL in terms of uh, Disneyland, how great they look when they put the makeup on and it completely transformed them. I'm sure that girl will do a good job. But yeah, interesting to see when you try and go work and people react negatively uh, to it, especially people that you're trying to somehow help protect and whatnot who you haven't spoken to because you only speak to the elites because, you know, again, Peter Dinkage is one of the elites in that regard. But yeah, Peter Dinkage got dunked on in that regard and I think that was hilarious to see from afar yeah let's talk about isco actually this um recently kind of popped up on my feed courtesy of the joe rogan subreddit and i'm obviously always on there you know just browsing quietly like a ghost in the background but somehow i guess from the back of all that backlash that joe rogan's been getting now with all the covid supposed misinformation that gets spewed out on his podcast that everyone just can't you know get over and has a hissy fit over it's just interesting everyone trying to police a flipping podcast from a comedian slash mma commentator but no one wants to police and actually call to task the government and their diabolic diabolical handling handling of covid in the pandemic in some parts obviously most of it's been done fairly adequately considering how inept most people are but there are some things that need to be addressed that people aren't willing to address but let's police this random podcast in it because a lot of people listen to it nonsense 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 but anyway it feels like off the back of it we now have this news courtesy of the joe rogan subreddit that supposedly over 70 shows or so, so over 70 new episodes adding on to the other episodes that didn't get ported over to the spotify when joe made the move there have now gone missing from the archives and for me again as a big joe rogan fan one of the disappointing things about him moving to spotify was that he didn't explain why those shows went missing and when he did finally explain it he tried to kind of brush it off like it was nothing now it wouldn't be nothing for most people especially considering the circumstances he was you know again um the rough estimate is that he received a hundred million dollars from spotify from what we heard from other comics who have big mouths and can't shut the fuck up he's supposed to have got way more than that and he's only licensing it to spotify so clearly it was a deal that could change the lives of his family for generations to come we know it cool we understand that kind of money can make you do some things that would go against a lot of your morals and ethics and whatnot right we definitely understand that part of it but the disappointing part of it is that joe rogan's always been this anti-censorship guy freedom of speech dude essentially you know this is what um shane gillish had to make a joke of and joe didn't really get it or he took it too personally but the usual kind of um rollout or the usual approach for most people getting on the joe rogan podcast especially when he was going through the cultural war stuff was you getting publicly cancelled if you got publicly cancelled for something that was fairly egregious it was more likely than not you would end up on joe rogan right especially if it happened to be some blue-haired college chick somewhere denouncing or calling you nazi or stalin or whatnot right because you decided or because you don't think men and women should have kids outside of wedlock i don't know whatever right you'd usually get on jre and he'd kind of, you know, use the opportunity of you getting on the show to remind people that he doesn't like censorship and we should live in a place where people are free to say what they want and blah, 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 blah. So it was really odd to me how as soon as he ported over to Spotify, all of these shows went missing, 40 of them. And again, don't get me wrong, a lot of those shows on that list happened to be ones that were fairly controversial, the likes of Alex Jones and Milo Yiannopoulos. You know, you understand why maybe Spotify wouldn't want to align themselves with such characters but i don't think it was up to them to explain it it would have been up to joe the guy that was flying the free speech you know flag to say hey fans you know this deal i'm taking i'm taking whatever it may be and unfortunately there were some compromises that were non-negotiable and we're not going to be able to port those over to spotify obviously those are those things are available wherever else you find the internet you can find them if you want to but if you want to listen to them via spotify you won't be able to listen to them there 
no problem it's completely fine but he didn't do that he just kind of acted like it never happened and then randomly on one show he ended up mentioning it why those episodes went missing and i think this is a clip now that i'm going to play for you where he randomly mentions it in episode number 1607 with fahim anwar of all people who again is not that well known of a comic but really funny guy and he just mentions it in passing kind of like nothing happened nothing occurred which again was a bit disappointing for me being a big jerry fan anytime anything gets big enough right you're gonna you're gonna get shit like that there's gonna be strings attached you know yeah that's uh the criticism of me being on spotify <laughs> yeah how's how's that been how's the move been they don't give a fuck man they don't care what you do they haven't given me a hard time at all there's a few episodes they didn't want on their platform that i was like okay i don't care uh -huh. but uh other than that like in terms of what i do in the future like the big test was having alex jones on <laughs> yeah a lot of yeah, all right, like, let's, see, let's see how this relationship really goes a lot of people are like you know they're telling joe rogan what he can do what he can't do i'm like they're not they're not so obviously that was his defense and now this website called jre missing basically has cataloged all of these episodes that are now missing from spotify and we're up to 133 and you know the crystalia ones maybe you can there's some you can maybe rationalize it in some way, shape or form, but I still think it's a bit egregious. Again, some Alex Jones returns is the recent one, I guess is no longer Gad sad makes, you know, again, sense compared to the cultural stuff, but some of them are just really crazy. Like Fia Vaughn, really of all people, Tom Segura, what did he possibly talk about? Um, Benjamin, maybe because he's gone off the reservation, but again, we don't get any explanation from Joe when it comes to these sort of things. That's a really disappointing part of it. I really did think this was, one of the things that again for me personally i kind of did get an inkling of this or why this would be an issue i don't know why it kind of stuck out to me was when he kind of failed to talk or mention anything regarding brian callen and chris lear's obviously cancellation that happened kind of back to back and again no one's expecting him to come on there and defend his friends but they are his friends he spoke about brian callen in really glowing terms They've they've known each other for i think two decades or something maybe more than that they kind of came up to not came up together but maybe in the la scene they were kind of coming up together a lot and callum was on the show especially the early ones back in the day a lot especially when they used to film on grainy webcams and whatnot yeah so they're very fairly close and whatever reason since the austin move you haven't really seen them hanging out together you hardly you hardly mention you hardly hear joe talking about brian callum unprompted i think in one of the recent episodes that's just come out recently um i think andy stump tries to or no mentions stories about brian callen and for whatever reason joe doesn't take the bait he doesn't try and lead on or carry on with the story or mention anything he just says some kind of you know throwaway comment that callen's a great guy but we haven't seen him on that show ever since then and i don't know if that's his own personal stance that he doesn't want to speak to him because he maybe thinks what he did he maybe believes the story or the rumors or the charge or if this is another kind of um silent sort of uh influence behind the scenes that spotify has on the show where they're basically saying hey we, if you've talked to these guys this deal is null and void and you know joe's got employees he's got people he has to look after in terms of family and friends would you want to risk his entire operation just so he can stand up for a couple of comics who you know maybe or may not be guilty of the crimes that they have been accused of i don't know but i think that maybe was the omen or that definitely was an indication as to the kind of overreach we're seeing now with spotify with this sort of stuff and yeah it's disappointing man it really really is disappointing and again like i said it would just be cool if you just got an explanation again russell peters really come on man now some of these guys you get right stefan mullen and stuff because there was a code there was a kind of um concentrated effort to kind of get him off the internet it felt like once he started talking about you know race and iq he, his time on social media was definitely going to be um it was definitely going to be short and sweet personally i'm always been a fan of radical trans not radical trans but yeah radical free speech say what the hell you want but also you should be willing to accept whatever consequences come your way whether it's getting deplatformed or punched in the face but for whatever reason, we live in a society where people don't even want you to say the thing. You could not allowed to say the thing. You say the thing, even if, even if you don't have a big following, you get deplatformed. No, it's like, no, let me say the thing. And if people don't want to listen to me, cool. But you don't decide who speaks and stuff. That's why I don't like. That's just horrible. Because unfortunately, or fortunately, these social media platforms or these avenues, these whatever they are, these publishers, these services, they've now become part of our sort of everyday 
way of life and essentially taking somebody off social media platform especially the the big ones it's like essentially you telling them they can't have a voice it's essentially taking away their ability to communicate with other people that's what you're basically doing and that's a real dis disappointing part of it like come on some of the people that have been taken off eliza schlesinger moshe kasha dan savage Bert kreischer for goodness sake come on absolutely makes no sense Griffith simmons like i know he's got a few edgy jokes and whatnot I wish you fear Amy Schumer. Like, you'd never see these guys together on a podcast again, would you? But yeah, really odd and really bizarre. I don't really understand why we caught to see, or we caught to hear Rogan give an explanation about this, but he probably won't. You pretend like it never happened, same as he did with Crystalia and Brian Callen. And we just have to wait and see what transpires from it. But really disappointing. I'm not going to lie, man. Really, really disappointing. I was a big fan of the show, but I guess it is what it is, isn't it? I guess it is what it is. What else do we have here? Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Let me just bend over this and see here what's I to talk about. Is that it? Yeah, maybe that might be it. Maybe that might be it. Oh, yeah, let's talk about this actually. Let's go here. Let's go here. Let's just end with this one. So obviously we started talking about the whole um can't, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just talk about it. Let's just end it here. So I, I did make some mention regarding Kanye going out um, with Julia Fox for her birthday and gifting her and her friends five Birkins, or maybe he bought her five and then she gave five to her friends. We don't know. But for whatever reason, off the back of that, he's now decided to get into a public feud with Kim Kardashian over social media, and it was entirely prompted by this. Um, <laughs> it was prompted because I guess Kanye was on his uh, on his phone and he must have stumbled across a, an account that was reposting content from North, well, obviously his eldest child with um, Kim, and he decided to take a screenshot of her to, of her TikTok account and with the following caption that said, "Since this is my first divorce, I need to know what should I do about my daughter being put on TikTok against my will." And as soon as this went on social, the internet completely exploded. People, you know, throwing in their two cents. For me personally, I have to be honest. As a um, somewhat um, normal dude, it's really annoying and frustrating to me that the pandemic and lockdown has turned me into a flipping gossip whore. I never wanted to be that guy. Um, I hate people who gossip. I hate goss. I hate gossip in general. I think it's garbage news. I think it does nothing to enrich or to provide us with any kind of um, direction for the future. It just wastes time. Um, it kind of takes time away from you actually concentrating on the things that you need to fix in your own life. It turns us into judge, jury, and executioner. But unfortunately, it's incredibly entertaining. It really is entertaining. Like you get to kind of wallow away your hours and you know, may sometimes days in a week that you have nothing to do looking at what other people are doing and essentially watching their car crash of a life in real time. And because it's people that you deem to be famous and rich and in some cases some people deem them to be better than what you are, it maybe is a good sort of leveling thing to kind of see some people go through some people that you think are better than you go through normal situations that you've known you've kind of gone through yourself or people in your family that you know and have kind of gone through in their own sort of way maybe obviously i've never had that kind of opinion of myself i don't think somebody's um worth is judged by what's in their pocket or what's in their bank account or what clothes they wear or what cars they drive um doesn't necessarily bother me and you know there are people who are affluent who just are affluent it doesn't necessarily mean anything about who they are as people it doesn't necessarily equate with that so they don't necessarily care but i know some people do care about sort of thing but it is funny to see this sort of stuff play out in real time because, you know, the unfunny part of it is that in the center of it all, the people who suffer the most are going to be the kids seeing their parents argue like this over them. It's obviously not the best way to kind of grow up, for sure. And when they get older, too, seeing all this evidence online of how tumultuous their parents' relationship was when they were going through their divorce is obviously something you wouldn't want to see. But, you know, so alas, we are where we are. So Kanye puts out that first post. Um, obviously in a weird way insinuating that Kim is not looking after North properly or not looking after her adequately um, or not to his standards 
and it just paints her as being a bad mom who probably isn't taking that much care and attention um or guidance over her daughter's sort of social media use and you know considering people think social media is a big bad wolf and there's loads of crazy and horrible and disgusting people out there who would do and say anything to gain attention it makes sense why people are a little bit apprehensive and a little bit worried about you know whatever then kim decides to respond with a response that i thought was really well done really well written and clearly not something that she wrote because every line was essentially a bullet to kanye's chest which says the following it says kanye's constant attacks on me in interviews and social media is actually more hurtful than any tiktok north might create so immediately she's kind of waving the victim flag which usually works in the public you know in the court of public opinion especially if you're the woman especially if you're the mum, because in this situation you need to sort of um set forth the narrative that you are the angel in this situation you've done nothing wrong it's just your crazy you know eccentric husband wiling out on the internet as per usual so great opening it continues as a parent who's the main provider and caregiver for our children i am doing my best to protect our daughter whilst also allowing her to express her creativity in a meeting that she wishes to with adult supervision because it brings her happiness so again the victim thing saying she's a child she loves tiktok she treats tiktok like a canvas and her phone's her brush and who would want to be the person responsible for taking a brush away from a child who would do that who would see a child painting and drawing on a table having the time of their life you know wrapped in what they're doing transporting themselves to another world who would want to take them out of it snap them out of it by pulling that brush away from their hand no one would want to do that so it clearly just tug at the heartstrings clearly tugs at the heartstrings but the weird part of it is that main provider caregiver thing that is a bullet and a barb that you don't want to hear if you're Kanye because he spends a lot of time or he's clearly puts a lot of his self-worth into how rich he is, right? I think the, the the richness thing was a validation for his ideas. The moment he became a billionaire, it kind of proved, yeah, I told you I'm the shit and this is monetary evidence of it because in life, life is not like sports. There's no like clear winner or loser, right? But sometimes attaining material things or having a healthy bank balance is your way to prove no i am better than you at life because you've attained these things that are usually are quite hard to attain in the first place or maybe only reserved for a select few people because of what it's made blah 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 you know what i mean so that was a clear way to kind of drive home there spread some doubt you know and just kind of change the narrative of the argument it continues it says divorce is difficult enough on our children and Kanye's obsession with trying to control and manipulate our situation so negatively and publicly is only causing further pain for all again more victim talk from the beginning i have wanted nothing but a healthy and supportive co-parent relationship because it is what is best for our children and it saddens me that kanye continues to make it impossible at every step of the way <laughs> which is hilarious because depending on who you believe just the other day he was complaining that he wasn't getting the address to his daughter's birthday party so who knows what's who's telling the truth it says here i wish to handle all matters regarding my children privately and hopefully he can finally respond into a third to the third attorney at attorney so hopefully he can finally respond to the third attorney he has had in the last year to resolve any issues amicably so clearly she's saying look i've had enough i've been trying to divorce you for ages but you keep dragging your feet you keep hiring and firing your attorneys now can we get this over and done with so we don't have to talk to each other like this in this regard so clearly some there's a lot of kind of built up pent up animosity there that kind of exist personally for me i don't like seeing it i think it's all garbage i'd much rather they just kind of you know sort it out amicably between them but you know that's probably not going to happen now this is too late Kanye replies again to that says obviously what do you mean i'm a may provide the americans america so you tried to keep kidnap my daughter on her birthday but not providing the address you put security on me inside of the house to play with my son then accused me of stealing i had to take a drug test after chicago's party because you accused me of being on drugs tracy romulus stopped manipulating kim to be this way who i think is the main um what is she she's like the pr person or publicist or something right like absolutely wild wild scenes and then i guess what's the last thing here then i guess he posts a screenshot of the terms and conditions of tiktok that basically says you can only use tiktok if you're over the age of 13 so clearly a whole mess of a situation i actually don't have anything to say because I, I don't really give a fuck i've got to be honest i just pulled it up because it's a podcast topic i really don't care um i don't know man what what needs to be said here they'll sort it out eventually 
we're just going to watch from the sidelines it's, it's nothing but plain entertainment to us it obviously should be more but we don't know these people so we don't necessarily care which it could be better it's not going to be better because it is what it is and we're going to have to just entertain ourselves with what we have available in it that's basically it i'm sorry for wasting your time with that bullshit topic i really am i thought i'd be inspired to talk about it but once i started running through i was like hold on i don't care about this i really don't care i don't and i know you don't too because next week you would have never you would have forgotten about this it wouldn't have been a hot topic thing anymore that's the thing i said to you about gossip is so useless information it's proper useless it does nothing for anyone it really does but anyway what do i know that is in the next show episode number 550 i'm sorry to end on that note but it is what it is sometimes you throw out podcasts that aren't the best and i think this one i definitely have to categorize and being a bit shoddy so please forgive me for the shoddiness of this pod but i hope you enjoy it nonetheless to some degree if it was horrible you know i'll chalk it up as an l and hopefully come more correct later but yeah um enjoy your weekend hope you have a good one and i'll see you guys again hopefully next week um again if you want to have more information regarding myself i'll put the links down below obviously in the description and again i'll see you guys again very soon if you listen to all your podcasts you hear a song if you're watching it via video it'll just end